one of the phrases that kept ringing in my ears as I prepared for this gospel on this feast or solemnity of Christ the King is that flourish after the Our Father. And sometimes we even sing it, you know. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. It keeps ringing in my ears as I talk about Jesus Christ, the King of the universe. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. This flourish was put into the margin next to the Lord's Prayer in Matthew's Gospel by one of the inscribers of the Middle Ages. In the days before the printing press, the only copies of books was produced by monks who spent long days meticulously reproducing the texts set before them. These men, they prayed over what they were writing. They prayed over what they were writing. The monk who wrote this flourish wanted to place a prayer next to what he was copy copying. He wanted to share what his soul was crying out. He wanted the world to know that God was the one and only King, the Supreme King. He wanted the world to know that Jesus Christ had come to establish the kingdom of God in the world. This kingdom was different from any world, any the world had ever seen. It was a kingdom of charity, a kingdom of love, a kingdom whose least members would be valued and cared for. And so at the conclusion of the 25th chapter of Matthew, we have the story of the sheep and the goats. This seemingly simple story leads us to a very profound meditation on the fundamental nature of the kingdom of God on earth, the church. First, the church is not a humanitarian organization. The church is the body of Christ here on earth. The church is the body of Christ here on earth. It looks to serve Christ and to be the Christ in every area of its life. Humanitarians are concerned with the good of their fellow men and women. This is wonderful and noble. The world has certainly benefited from the determination of so many rich individuals, couples and organizations who have given a great deal of their wealth for worthy causes. God sees them. God will reward them. But what we do in the church is far more than humanitarian. We seek the very presence of the Lord in those who are hurting. When he tells the sheep that they will be rewarded or the goats that they will be condemned, the Lord does not just say that those who are suffering are important to him. No, he goes much further. He identifies with them. He identifies with them. He says, I was hungry. I was thirsty. I was naked. I was a stranger. I was sick. I was in prison. As members of the body of Christ, our works of charity and mercy are not just something that we do for the sake of doing them. It is our caring for the very presence of Jesus Christ in those with profound needs. We are Christians, servants of the one who identifies himself with the marginalized. Secondly, we cannot be satisfied with simply encouraging our government to care for all who are suffering. Yes, we must do that. The United States Conference of Catholic Bishops, it is correct in its efforts as lobbyists in Washington, D.C. It is patriotic for the church to demand that our government 
be just, and be moral. But efforts to change the laws of the country do not supplant our responsibility to care for the weakest of our society ourselves. Regardless of whether the country in which we live in is just or unjust, we ourselves must always be charitable. Thirdly, we must respond to what we have received from the Lord. What have we received from Him? We have received mercy. We have received reconciliation. We have received acceptance as sons and daughters of God. It is a challenge, my dear brothers and sisters, for us to live out the gratitude we owe God. We demonstrate our gratitude in the way in which we treat those who are abandoned in the world today. What is often called the preferential option for the poor is then something we undertake not out of a sense of duty, but out of a sense of gratitude for the extraordinary gift of God's love. There's the word, love. Love is amazing. Love is amazing. We receive love only by giving love. We receive love only by giving love. We receive God's love by sharing the, His love with others, particularly with those people whom Jesus Christ has said He is present in a very special way. Our American society today is suffering from extreme polarization. I know you will agree with me on that. The left versus the right. The liberals versus the conservatives. Republicans versus the Democrats. Each side sees little good in the other side and little wrong in their own side. Many people, including Catholics, yes, including Catholics, are identifying themselves with political parties and political ideals. This is wrong. You know why? The Lord does not call us into a particular political party or ideology. He's calling us into the kingdom of God. He's not calling us to a political party. He's calling us into the kingdom of God into the kingdom of the universe whose Christ is the king. He's calling us to identify ourselves as authentic. That's the key. Authentic followers of Jesus Christ. When we do this, then perhaps we may find ourselves supporting various positions of each party because these positions, they best represent the one, the true party we are called to join, the party of Jesus Christ. Team Jesus we are as Christians. Team Jesus. Do you hear me? Team Jesus. This is what we are. This is who we are as authentic followers of Team Jesus. Not liberals, not conservatives, not Democrats, not Republicans. But King Jesus. And so, on this feast of Christ the King, I invite you to ask yourself, are you an authentic follower of Jesus Christ? The party you only need to belong to? And that's the reason why you are here? Being Christian? It's a tall order. It's a hard question. That's why that phrase that we often pray and that we often respond to after the Our Father, 
With gusto we say, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Really. Really. Is that what I live out? Is that what I proclaim in my life? Is that the party I really belong to only? On this feast of Jesus Christ, the King. Maybe fervently, heartfully, authentically respond after the Our Father. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory is his, now and forever. Amen.